Hold on, I guess. As I'm trying to decide on whether or not to look deeper into Mitsuru-san's state of mind, Fuka-san gets up from her operator seat and beckons me what over. Is it? If we can put Labyrinth aside for a moment, are you going to be all right without having any maintenance done on you? I guess. Yeah, we're what fine. What do you mean? I read the documents on your new equipment. At first, I assumed it was referring to that large gun, but it's actually ah, that. True. There have been no tests confirming that it is capable of being used in an actual combat. Oh, good! They're situation. actually giving me a fight right at the beginning. A powerful foe this time. Is it even possible? If even one thing were to go wrong. Fuka-san's face clouds as she looks at me. I can't be confident that I'll be all right, and I'm unable to tell her a pleasant lie to calm her down. In any case, I only pray that a situation that requires me to use my new equipment never arises. A.K.A. I think they changed her combat style in this one. Both of us are tense as we prepare to depart. I could be wrong. Malay. I haven't played the first uh, arena either, but that's basically how you would exposition that. I see. Thank you. I've also prepared Akihiko-san's favorite protein drink, and Fuka-san has been preparing a playlist suitable for a road trip in her room. Huh? That will be all, Kikuni. Very well. Pardon me. As expected from Kikuno-san, she is amazingly considerate as a personal assistant should be, but she can be too thoughtful at times. We learned this for ourselves when she came to accept us as people who are precious to Mitsuru-san. Let's start this over, shall we? Shadow operatives, let's mobilize. Thanks to Kikuno-san, the tension in the air subsides a bit, but we cannot allow our attention to wander just now. Upon completing our preparations for departure, we immediately make our way to Inaba. Why are we taking this car again, Mitsuru? Akihiko-san grumbles from the back seat of the Shadow Operator's personal limousine. I'm not sure how to put this, but I find that his feelings are justified. Don't question it, Akihiko. There was no time to prepare a vehicle with the same equipment. Speaking of appearances, are you going to wear that again? Sure. There's a chance that we'll nice. have to fight after all. These clothes give me the flexibility I need. AKA, we didn't want to redraw all the sprites from the last one. Impressive, Akihiko-san. You never change. Literally. Still, to think that the culprit would make a move so soon. We've completely lost the initiative. Indeed. We need to begin taking measures right now. And we hope no danger comes to Narakana and his friends. Mitsuru-san seems deeply agitated. During the car ride, she seemed distracted. Ten shift! At times, she would flip through the thick file in her lap, only to suddenly give an order to a subordinate, and at other times she would stare intently at her watch as if lost in thought. Her usual regal composure is gone. Mitsuru-san, why don't we just ask them to cooperate with us? Ha! I agree. They seem oh, well, she, the, he, she means the, uh, the group from P4. No, they're still young. The investigation team. I asked team. for their assistance. It would waste time better spent in school. Worse yet, it would put them in danger. I don't no, they don't break. To have to go it's all good. It's all good. I understand how you feel, but they don't seem like the kind who'd listen. No, we that the too. Same way back then. <laughs> I forget what the time gap is between three and four. Two sound falls silent. It's likely not a mistake to think that the sudden spike in shadow activity this time is related to the events of a few days ago. It has become apparent to everyone that another dangerous battle is about to begin. We have new information. Kikuno sent me a message. Great. I tasked Kikuno with reviewing Ergo Research's quarantine server. Okay. But it seems new evidence has come to light regarding Ikutsuki, who we discussed in our earlier conversation. Okay. According to the report, it seems Ikutsuki was performing an experiment on his own in the lab directly after the explosion. Okay. It's unknown if this is related to our current mission, but there was a record of a plume of dusk being used in the experiment. Okay. A plume of dusk. A plume of dusk, an object that blurs the line between matter and information, and is fitted into an anti-shadow weapons like myself. It forms the core of our personality modules and is what allows us to control personas, even though we are machines. So, 
What are the details of this experiment? Nothing good, I bet. Of course not. Ikutsuki was. The limousine's engine suddenly roars, drowning out further conversation. It seems the road we are taking has begun to climb a steep hillside. As the car takes a winding road up the slope, I can look down through the window and see lush trees along the mountainside. I love mountain drives in Japan. They're so nice. For a moment, I thought I sensed a shadow reading. Could it have been my imagination? Yamagishi, tell me our current location. One moment. I'm looking it up now. We're currently in Inaba Pass. We're almost at the target coordinates. Something gonna happen. Oh, cool, a video. What is this? Uh oh. Was that? What's wrong? <laughs> What's happening? Driver, what's going on? Answer me! Yep, this he's either possessed or one of the clones. I guess. On it. Knock, knock. A barrier. That's annoying. Did you really need to drive it off a cliff? I mean, we know what happens. They get captured. But you could have just driven to, like, an offload point. I was kind of hoping for a fight to test Agus' ability, but whatever. Oh, no, she's a Sentai star now. Featherman victory! So you come to fight me, Featherman? Huh. Merlion, the evil forces of fallen stop here. How dare you oppose me, Minion Links? Get them! Mm -hmm. Apparently, she's too good for flips. Needs more putty. Everyone, I've had enough of this. Ultimate arrow. It's over. Get clocked. I'm straight up killing a dude. <laughs> like you do. And cut. Perfect. What a take. Thank you very much. Well done. That was really great. Now do it again, but slower. Forgot to take the lens cap off. Let's take a 10 minute break. When the director. Uh, it sounds way too much like Argus. When the director calls this out, the tension in the area dies away. I make my way to the simple tent used as our break room and take a sip of my drink. The scenes for today are done. I'm tired. <laughs> You're on a roll, Feather Pink. Huh? Do you think so? The directors had nothing but good things to say, too. Looks like this will have a positive effect on your main job. Speaking of your next shoot. My main job? My real job is supposed to be studying in college. I wipe the sweat from my brows and my manager excitedly tells me about the schedule for my next gig. I'd always had an interest in fashion, so I started taking modeling jobs as a way to earn some pocket money. It's pretty tough since I'd had to do things like pose in the middle of winter in just a t-shirt, but thankfully I've been able to get a steady flow of commissions now. Trying to manage both classwork and my job as a model was already hard enough when my manager applied for an audition for a live action show without my consent, claiming that I should broaden my work horizons. Get a new manager! When I mentioned I had practiced archery in high school, it really got their attention. 
It all made sense to me when I learned that Feather Pink's weapon should be a bow and arrow, though. As a result, I ended up a as a protector of Earth, a true protector of Earth, uh, in a kid superhero show starting this year. While my acting work makes use of different expressions, and my modeling career lets me dress up in a lot of different clothing, it kind of makes me feel like I'm changing who I am, too. That's acting. <laughs> it's insanely busy, but fulfilling and fun, and yet... What's wrong? Something troubling you? Oh, not really. I check my cell phone, but Mitsuru-senpai still hasn't sent me a response. I have tomorrow off, so I'd emailed her earlier asking if she'd like to spend some time with me and go shopping. She's been contacting me less and less often recently, and when she does, it's because of shadows. I am one of the shadow operatives, a group of established a group established by Mitsuru Senpai. I understand that she wants us all to have be able to have normal lives, and she said that she wouldn't hesitate to ask for my help if she ever needed it, but it still seemed to me like she was taking everything on by herself. That attitude didn't satisfy me, so I forced her to add me to her team. However, unlike Aegis and the other official members, I'm part of a special unit that only gathers in emergencies, trusted with immediately subduing shadows by force. What did she call it? The Auxiliary Staff? Something like that, anyway. It's wonderful that there have been no situations that called for us to be dispatched, and even if something like that did arise, the official shadow operatives are all excellent. There's no need to worry with the likes of Akiko Senpai and Aegis around, but Is it really that hard to just send back a reply? It's Golden Week for God's sake. Hmm? What's this? Don't tell me you've got some boyfriend trouble. Oh no no, it's nothing like that. I ship it. We normally talk when we see each other, but I've so I've never doubted my friendship with her. Still, things remain unsettled and it's unsatisfying. Uh, maybe I have to get on her case about taking everything on all by herself again. Huh, there's something odd going on outside. What? What's this helicopter doing here? Is there a helicopter in this shooting script? Huh? Nope. As the sound gets closer, the tense walls and roof begin to undulate with an intense wind. Good word. That is one thing I love about this, uh, the localization, is just a lot of good vocab words. When I rush outside, I see the crew are all looking up and causing a commotion. When I look up, there's a black helicopter descending toward the ground, dangling a rope ladder. The lady in the pilot seat sees me and gestures me towards the ladder. Oh. Time to get the bad anti-shark spray. At that moment, it all becomes clear. I only know of one person who would do this. I'm glad she came, but she's making too big of a scene. I'm completely astounded by the utter abs absurdity of the situation. Before I know it, I'm already running towards the ladder. And nobody from the shoot questions this. Like, hey, maybe confirm that you're done for the day. All right, let's do this dweeb. Ladies love spear wielding nerds. Man, you were amazing. <laughs> Thanks for cheering for me. You're a real hit with the ladies. <sighs> I'm gonna get going for today. Okay, you better be this good next time, too. Leave it to me. No need to shower or anything. That's it. There's some time until dinner, so I decided to leave the main dorm again with Koromaru. This Gagokan dormitory is where we live. It was briefly closed after Mitsuru-san and the others graduated. All the equipment from a few years ago was removed, of course. But with the increase in students at Gekokan, they decided to reopen the dorm. I applied for a room as soon as I heard. The reason I did was because of Koromaru. He had been in Aegis' son's care, but at this dorm, he'd be allowed to live with me. Also, to be honest, I felt that living here 
lets me stay close to my companions who are fighting even now. Back then, everyone took turns walking Kod Kodomaru. Now it's my job. The path to the nearby N Naganaki Shrine is Kodomaru's usual route. Kodomaru is quite old for a dog, but as he trots along at his usual pace along our usual path, it makes me think for a moment that all the fighting back then was just a dream. Only when I'm watching Kodomaru walk like this can I forget everything and feel a little elite at ease. We pass through the gateway at the entrance and step onto the shrine grounds. Since it's nearly sundown, there's nobody but us at the serene grounds. I sit down on a bench and sigh to myself. Kodomaru notices, though, and immediately rushes over to nuzzle my leg. It's nothing, Kodomaru. Even while I'm saying it, I'm sure Kodomaru can see through my words. I can't understand him in the same way Aiga-san can, but even I can tell what Kodomaru is thinking. I pet Kodomaru as he looks up at me with a worried whine, and I put my hand in my pocket to pull out the shadow operative badge that Mitsuru-san had given me. Kodomaru wears the same badge on his collar. Even if she gave me this, I know it's just for show. I bet everyone else is working hard right now. This morning, I got a call from Sonata-san for the first time in a long while. It seemed he'd just come back from Japan from a year-long training journey. Wandering the world? I knew he was the kind of person who would put himself through anything in order to get stronger, but this is the sort of thing that you only hear about in stories. Sonata-san told me that he had gone to see Mitsuru-san directly after his return to the country, but been, had been immediately dispatched to an emergency. He's currently busy with that, so he just said to, that he would tell me more about his trip some other time. I know that being a shadow operative must be tough, but he seemed so excited when talking about them, so it's like I get these pent-up feelings inside. I too, you know. Aww. A member, yes, but only as a part of a secondary unit that only gets called out in extreme situations. Being part of a special suppression unit has a cool ring to it that I like. But the official shadow operatives are each given a unique number. For example, Aigasan is member number five. We don't have that. We're just auxiliary members. I haven't been called into action yet, and I doubt I ever will be until after I graduate high school. After all, I did promise Mitsuru-san that I would try to live out my childhood as much as I could. I'm just for show, too. And following that promise to try as much as I could, I've been acting like a child on the surface. An average middle school student, studying, helping out with club activities, and even taking part in the student council. But I haven't officially joined any clubs, and the reason why is because I asked Mitsuru-san to call me for help if she ever needed it. I know that no organization under the police would be able to command an underage person, let alone someone in middle school. I'm only a shadow operative for show, and only a child for show. If this continues, I won't know when I'll ever be able to go back to who I really Making am. Making my life my own is actually pretty hard. Sometimes I lose sight of what I'm supposed to be doing. 